Greetings, everyone. My name is Bob Baldwin. You stopped by the New Urban Jazz Lounge here, and I am talking to a very fantastic artist, one that you may not know about yet because uh, she's still working her way to the top. She is uh, based out of the great state of Ohio, and she's got a new single coming out called Long Way Home. And we want to have this virtual listening party on behalf of COVID, because that's where we are today. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Tennille. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in today, tonight. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I can't complain. I can't complain. So uh, we have a lot to talk about here, because uh, a lot of people don't know who you are, but your voice is really, really fantastic. I got a chance to listen to your, your latest single, Long Way Home. How are you surviving this? Uh, well, yeah, we thought 2020 was crazy. 2021 is getting off to an interesting start, isn't it, in Georgia? It really is. It's, it's uh, a lot of still things going on with politics and everything. And yeah, it's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I wanted to, uh, you know, just talk about, you know, your artist career and uh, some of the things that you've done over the years. I've got a little bio on you that I read and uh, got some interesting things in there. I see you uh, caught the nation's eye and ear with a collaboration with uh, Ted Williams, the homeless man with the golden voice in the song, The Survivor's Prayer in 2011. And uh, you didn't went on to uh, work with such artists. Now, were you uh, on stage with these, these gentlemen? You were in, in, the, in the group with uh, these artists that we were mentioning, Warren Hill, Day Six, Shirley Murdoch, the NG of Shy, the uh, uh, Rude Boy, Mel yeah, Large. Yeah, I just had the pleasure of opening for them. Um, mm -hmm. Would have been a blessing to perform with them, but that's not to say that can't happen, so. <laughs> I try to Is say- that Warren Hill the saxophonist? Warren Hill was my first opening act. It was at a, a banquet. It was like a, actually it was a medium-sized banquet. It was about 200 people there. And, really? Uh, and, yeah. Town. In Columbus, and okay. I got okay. that opportunity from my sound guy at the time. So, oh, nice! Yeah. Nice. it was really nice, and he was so was sweet. That your first uh, gig opening up for somebody? Yeah. Wow, that's exciting. I know. Oh. I was. I was really excited. A little nervous. I got off to a rough start, but you know, as I got more comfortable, comfortable, and realized what I was doing, I went into Tennille mode. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you just kind of just kind of just clicked over, right? Yeah. <laughs> Did you was that with a band or a uh, track date? He had a backup band and you know, of course he was playing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well with myself, I'm sorry. Um yeah, with a uh, track. Yeah, I'm singing with the track. Very cool. Very cool. And uh your bio says you've been compared to Lauren Hill, Mary J. Bage, Jill Scott, Marsha, Ambrosius. To name a few. Yeah. I was like, yeah, those things I've heard from people I wish uh, they would tell me when. <laughs> ah, I hear you. When did yeah, that happen? Nice, uh, that's a nice compliment, though. It really was, yeah. That's a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong lineup there. So um, let's let's start with the basics. Um, so you're Ohio born. What 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 city were you born in? Columbus, the south side of Columbus, South Field. Okay. <laughs> Look, I can't oh. talk like that with them looking at uh, Okay, I'm a goddess. No. <laughs> Shout out to Southfield. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or Cobo. I know where Southfield, Michigan is, but not in Ohio. Is, is that a big town? No, it's uh, actually maybe about uh, 15 blocks long. I was actually on the Cobo side. Excuse me, Cobo, sorry. But um, everyone who knew the area always went by Southfield, but we made our own in Cobo. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. And uh, when did you uh, first know that I want to sing for a living? What was that? When did you know that you wanted to sing for a living? Oh, for a living. Uh, I think I kind of fell into that. Um, I I think it started off when I was supporting other artists because I love really? music. Yeah, and I think I just I kind of fell into that because my initial first show was um singing um hooks for a hip-hop artist um who went by lyrical okay. and um yeah and so it's just like hmm i like this you know but that was like later on like in 
um, shortly after high school. But uh, oh, okay, so you were still you were still in high school. Yeah, but before that, you know, all throughout my childhood and middle school and high school, I performed at church and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, when they found out that I had my karaoke machine for Christmas one year, <laughs> that was it. That was your breakout party. That, that was it. And then um, they then I got a keyboard from my dad one year, and my mom heard me playing, so she took me to a couple of piano lessons. Just only after two lessons. I'm at the church trying to play the piano by ear, and now we got a youth choir. Okay, I was what? like, <laughs> yes, I was like, uh. <laughs> they just, they just threw you in the, in the fire, didn't they? Yes, it was. Yes, they're they're big supporters, but they will push you and put you in uh, really uncomfortable situations any chance they get. <laughs> but to uh, them, it's a blessing. It's a calling. But yeah, it didn't last very long, thank God. But um, <laughs> I love them. <laughs> but you That's still play though, right? By ear, uh, no, I haven't touched the keyboards in oof. <clears throat> yes, I got stuff you. going on, you know, life going on and things like I that. I hear you. I hear you. Tell me, tell me about some of your influences as a vocalist. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I was thinking about that, and um, I don't want to throw anyone off with my broad variety, but I know for a fact I wanted to tell you that as um, as a young child, Whitney Houston, of course, I mean her voice catches Ooh. everyone, and um, yeah, her, her early her. voice was just amazing. Yeah. And I mean, when I was a kid, I was just like, oh, that is my mom, you know. Just like, <laughs> she was too young oh, to be with mom, wow. but you know, just <laughs> um, wow. Her, Anita Baker and Sade and Sade and and see the thing is I don't know if it's Sade or Sade but we always we always, we've always said Sade but those three voices right there at least um, you didn't say Sadie didn't oh say no Sadie. <laughs> um, I mean uh, hearing them sing and then when I got to a point got a little older in middle school got me a nice TV and I could actually see them on screen and because wow. my stepdad used to play their music well Anita Baker for me anyway and then I used to hear um Sade and Whitney Houston on the radio and I was just like oh my god you know it's just so beautiful just making my hair stand up on the back of my neck and I, was, I just yeah. fell in love with music at a, at a young age but then when I became more of like a teenager I kind of gravitated more towards hip-hop and really yes and um I remember mom, um, uh, Mama Soldier and Queen Latifah. And when mm. I first heard Queen Latifah sing U N I T Y, then I was like, mm. "Ooh, I wanted to do both because you know I was writing poetry at the time." And um, then shortly after that, you know, a couple of years later after that, Lauren Hill, Mary J. Blige came. I was just like, "Oh, come on, I can do that." No, wow. <laughs> that's when hip hop uh, had, was a little more. I don't want to say musical, but a little more earthy, right? Had a little different kind of vibe back then, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, when Mary J mm -hmm. and and definitely even Lauren Hill, even though it's two different types of styles, it's just it it just gave the um it to me, it just made me feel like of course I could relate to it because I was going growing mm -hmm. up in that era. But then right. also we're looking at the Curtis Mayfields and the Gladys Knights mm -hmm. and, you know, we hear that soul music, but then we're, we're listening to more like the rhythm, rhythm and blues and relationships and uh, what's going on today. It was current. It was modern. And so I could grow with it, you know, so it was pretty cool because, you know, I was listening to Atlantic Star with my stepdad and then, you know, I get ah, yeah. Star, great group. That was, <laughs> that was a monster group right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, I, I hear a few genres that you've mentioned. Um, what other genres do you like besides the ones you mentioned? Ooh, anything other than heavy metal, dark grunge, I'm, I'm okay with that. So let me just push that over there. But <laughs> um, uh, I experienced, I experienced um, or had the opportunity to collaborate with um, other artists in different genres of country and the classic rock. Hmm. Um, some recording and some performing live. And um, I would mention one very, very, that's just so close to my heart. Howard Murphy um, was acoustic guitarist. Um, and we did a song together called Work On Your Hands. And oh man, that man, he was, he was so mountainous. He was just like that old school cowboy, just, um, I fell in love with this. I just got that, that appreciation for bands, but then Again, as time went on, it was more for musicians, not bands that were already, you know, out there and I was listening to, but 
meeting musicians as I was performing and everything, I fell in love with jazz because um, it gave me an instrumental platform, if that makes sense at all. I fell in love with jazz and um, jazz musicians. I, I listen to it all the time. It's my calming Sunday afternoon after church, you know. Um, so of course I love gospel too. But also I think, again, I don't want to throw my supporters off because there's a broad age range of my supporters but it was like George Benson and uh, Norman Brown. Uh, I fell in love with the voice of Cassandra Wilson, just how she takes other songs and put it together and make it sound so um, mystique, like she, just mystique. She was mysterious in her voice, but strong and powerful. I love Cassandra Wilson. So um, my love for different genres to her, um, for country, R&B, jazz, classic rock. I like live bands and musicians. So yeah, that's a big part of my life. And so Mint Condition, hmm. oh Lord Jesus, yes. Um, so I do, I mean, I'm you into know, different genres. That's a very but, powerful group even today. They, they got a great uh, sound. Yes. So yeah, I'm really into um, live bands and things like that. And, and you know, of course, like Steve Tyler and all that and, um, Couple, couple rock, classic rock out there. So, <laughs> mm -hmm, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Um, do you have a band that you work with? Because uh, you live in Atlanta now. You have a band that you work with in, in Atlanta? Not currently. Um, but right before I moved to Arkansas about five years ago, I did uh, perform with a couple bands here. And so it's just, you know, it's just, I've been here maybe a couple months so it's just gonna take some time to reconnect and see what everybody's up to okay. um yeah well, I, well yeah we'll get to that later on as performing but um i do have a lot of connections with musicians um that i've worked with that i have worked with or you know know about just via social media um pretty much in every main city that i've already performed in um mm -hmm. the only place i haven't been i haven't virtual to is the west just yet so um, but, you know, I got it all, you know, Chicago, New York, Florida, Memphis, Atlanta, you know, Ohio, of course. And so, yeah. I saw, I saw your YouTube clip uh, when you were touring, uh, traveling through the big city of New York. You were pretty fascinated by it, weren't you? I was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, was that your first time there? It was my first time. <laughs> And you know, if I, you were loving it, <laughs> oh, I'm in love with it. I, but at first, it was like, oh, I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna wait on anyone. I'm gonna go, and I got this planned. And you know, I got people I can call. Wow. I need help. Yeah. And so I get there, and luckily, I took the advice um, of some people who I was talking to. Stay in New Jersey, right across the bridge. <laughs> right, right. Big difference. Big difference. <laughs> yes, it was great on my pocket. The commute was great. Um, yes, yeah, that's, that's right. But then when, when it was time for me to get over there and move around, you know, go to the indie soul um, show that I was going to, I had to get to Harlem, you know, just going to those different mm -hmm. places. Um, it, <laughs> I got lost a couple times on the train. <laughs> and I, Whoa. Yes. <laughs> so, that could have uh, been dangerous. Well, I'm glad, glad you found your way back. Yes. And I started early. I started early in the day. And, and then when I got oh, to wow. time prayer and stuff like that, I had to have a slice of pizza. I don't even know if I stopped at the right one. I just had to say I had one on time. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Any pizza in New York, even the worst looking place, got the best pizza. Oh, man. It was so good. But I, I did, I, you know, again, it's just the train was my biggest challenge. And then um, when I, again, when I got to Times Square, I was just like, okay, take a picture and move, take a picture and move. So I was just like, click, go, click, go. <laughs> so I was trying to be fast because there were a couple of people just like, hey, you know what? Hey, can I help you? Hey, little, no. Uh, <clears throat> Mills, no speak, no English. No speak. Oh, <laughs> no. I did. I did. I only speak Swahili as a <laughs> I did. So it That's was <laughs> I love that shot you did. You actually you were on the subway. You caught somebody doing some breakdancing. Oh just, man! I, I, even I've never epic. seen that. I've been on the subway hundreds of times. Yeah, that was epic. And um, I think it was uh, yeah, Terry Moore. He was asking, "Why did you sing?" I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> I don't need that much attention." <laughs> That's a little bit too much attention. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So tell me about, um, I was reading in your bio about you working with, uh, I call him the golden voice, Ted Williams. Now, where is he from and where did you meet him? I don't know if Ted is originally from Columbus, Ohio, but he was actually discovered in, in Columbus. I, I always right. thought it was Cleveland, but um, wow. he was hanging out on the um, side streets. Yeah, and um, he was uh, telling people that, um, you know, if you help me out, I would sing for you or, or or talk for you or something. He was just like, I'm a man with a golden voice, please help me kind of thing. And one of the uh, DJs or um, yeah, DJs from the, lo the local radio station pulled up to him and he asked them to do, you know, call out the radio, you know, call numbers or letters. And um, he did it. And everybody was just like, oh my God, who is this man? You know? Um, and I didn't find out about that until um after meeting our my my two managers alan audra at the time and they said well we represent ted williams and i said tell ted what ted what the guy with the golden voice and i was just blown away you know and i when i got a chance to meet him he's such a sweetheart really i mean just so nice and caring and things like that um they kept him busy you know but of course we know mm -hmm. about his downs and things like that but and overall mm -hmm. i would say you know he's a wonderful wonderful man yeah just needed a little how long ago was it you was 2011 you worked with him yeah yeah we did um we did one song together it was the a survivor's prayer where he did spoken word and i did you know like the hook or the chorus and the bridge and we had some backup singers it could have used a little bit more better production, but um, he killed it. I mean, no, I mean, wow. no re-record, no take one, no take two. He just got in, he he had a script, he went in, you know, I me a couple of times just laughing and giggling. Maybe I was a little starstruck. I don't know. I mean, I hardly do, or I think I, I feel I don't, but I was a little giggly, you know, like now I can't get the smile off my face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm looking at my screen, but okay. Um, uh, <laughs> Um, but then the backup singers, they were very, ho, 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 you know, it was, it, yeah, it wasn't really the vibe I thought it was going to go, but it, it was, it was three different things going on there. Cause it was, you know, silly enough, or I don't want to say bad enough, but strange enough, we have this wonderful, not even Barry White, it's just like a strong, powerful voice pretty much telling his story in this spoken word, not, not I me, mean, not in detail, but just giving some uplifting message. And then you got this gospel singing voice coming out the side, like you better do it, you know? <laughs> and then opera coming from the background, you're like, wait, where are we going with this? But overall That's it funny. works. Yeah, <laughs> overall it works. A little, so little bit of a misdirection yeah. on, the, <laughs> on, on the vision. Huh? Yeah, and it would have been nice to continue to do some things with him. We did go to the Monique show together and I was hoping to nice. get an appearance um, there too. But, um, you know, he was able to tell his story. So, you know, now I just hope he's doing well. You know, I haven't heard from him. I was going to ask you, where is he now? Do you know? Last I heard, he was doing some voice voiceovers or um, things like that in sports. And then before that, it had something to do with Kraft mac and cheese, I believe. I'm not sure how long ago that was, but um, I hope he's doing well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I want to talk about your discography for a minute. How many uh, CDs or singles have you released in your uh, in your music career life? Um, oh, well, um, underground or commercial? No. <laughs> uh, well, you, we all have done underground. So tell yeah. me about the commercial one. Um, I released two CDs, one LP, one EP, and two singles. Well, one single, and then this one here will be my second single. Okay. Now, this Learning to Love project, was that an album that I saw? Yes, Learning to Love was my first in 2007. Okay, okay, okay. That's, I heard some uh, some nice tracks on there. I heard Shine and Only One. Oh, thank you. Now, this Now and Never track that you did in 07, um, was that part of the same project? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 There was a lot involved with that song too. A lot of inspiration mm -hmm. for that song. Right. 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 So, um, you know, reading deep in the, into your bio, I see you've had some some health challenges. Before we talk about that, let's talk about your challenges, as we all have as an independent artist. Tell me some of the uh, some of the struggles you've had in trying to get your stuff out there as an independent artist, because I know. 
we all have our stories. Yeah. <laughs> Money. <laughs> mm. There you go. Funding, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the green support. Um, mm -hmm. with the, the green support. I like that. <laughs> it was the roughest challenge, but um, hmm. Uh, I think I, I think when we have challenges, we have to sacrifice something, right? Yes, exactly. So I guess I would say I sacrificed relationships because I, when I really got deep into it, um, I was already a single mother and um, I had a full-time job and then um, I got into IT. So I was doing database at home. So I had a full-time job working outside of the home and then I'm at home working part-time in the evening during the week and then another part-time job on the weekends. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole, you have to do yeah. some serious work yeah that that was the challenge of trying to tell myself hey you know what you could take some personal time today <laughs> oh well, i know that's right sometimes yeah. you get so in, in gross right yes I, that my biggest challenge is telling myself when to take a break balance yes mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um but then on top of that you had to deal with some health challenges. Tell us about those challenges. Um, I, I, read, I read about it briefly, but I want you to tell your story because I know it's, uh, you know, this particular health challenge to deal with your your voice, right? Yes, yes. Um, the silent killer, sarcoidosis. Mm -hmm. um, those of you who haven't heard about it, um, it is a potentially inflammatory disease that can grow in any organ. And unfortunately, mine is in my lungs. So um, I guess the best important thing for me is to learn how to do the breathing techniques where I try to push out as much air as I can when I'm breathing out. So that's, I mean, that's one thing. But mm -hmm. um, when I found out in 2006, I was actually going to the doctor because there was a mole or something growing on right here on my face. And I'm looking down, you know, I'm thinking, I don't want a mole right here between my eye and my nose. You know, I might go cross-eyed mm -hmm. looking at it. So <laughs> oh, Jesus. I was going to go and have it removed. And um, the doctor said, no, this is not a mole. We're going to have to do a biopsy. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I said, what is a biopsy? And I, that's the first time I ever heard of it. And um, so I looked it up and um, I went and got the biopsy and um they did some more research, did, you know, chest x-rays and things like that, and MRI. I mean, they really, I'm glad that they did that because I think because of the cells in it made them dig deeper because normally, wow. yeah, normally um, it's something that you just stumble upon, you know, mm -hmm. just like that re research because it's so hard to find. They they completely, or they, they would like immediately um, just say, oh, you have some type of cancer because it is a part of cancer wow. family. Yeah. So that was, that was a shock. So now sarcoidosis, it's not, it's not a cancer uh, component. It's, um, since they're still doing research, um, you know, I, I think I told you in the email that, you know, it's like only seven, eight doctors in the U.S. that specialize in it. And they're still wow. trying to figure out what's going on. There's no etiology. Um, as far as they know, it's not hereditary, mm. which I think is strange. Um, but they, you know, common commonly they're saying that it's, a version of cancer that's what mm -hmm. they're saying but um yeah it's just it's really strange and then uh dr krauser who diagnosed me put me on hydrochloroquine and i'm sure hmm. that's oh, heard of that <laughs> <laughs> what trump was saying yeah yeah okay homie but okay anyway i'm not going to do policies i can't um uh only after 30 days of taking this medicine i had to get glasses Oh, really? Yeah. So it affected your uh, your eyesight? Yes. Wow. Uh, and I had not looked at the side effects before then because I was more concerned about curing or getting better. And um, then when I did, um, color blindness, blindness, and other other side effects were involved. But, you know, a lot wow. of times when they give you the side effects, they just try to cover all bases of what could happen. But sure. yeah, 30 days. And so I stayed on it for maybe another three months or so. Um, no, no, two months after my prescription ran out. And then I said, you know what? Let me just try some other things. Let me just see what they found out. And that's how I found out um, stopsarcardosis.org and some mm -hmm. things that you could do to keep it at bay. 
So I'm eating like diet, um, things that could trigger things, especially for me in my lungs. It's a lot of aerosols, right. chemicals, things like that. Oh, yeah. 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 So I just went on this natural craze like I, i've tried really? and especially not just with that i was like i tried vegan and vegetarian and i was putting more salt in my food than i was than that soul food so uh, <laughs> you put so, salt on top of salt again, <laughs> yeah so i'm more like 70 percent raw foods and nice. then and how long have you been, uh, are you total vegan right now? No, no. I tried vegan. I mean, not that it's bad, but um, I tried vegan for about six months. Then I was a vegetarian. That's strong. That's pretty good. You did better than me. Oof. Uh, I did like yeah. six days. <laughs> um, and then, well, after the vegan, then I went back to, you know, my cheese, my grilled cheese and things like that. And so I tried vegetarian. That lasted for maybe four months. And then I, I really after that four months i said okay um this is not working <laughs> did you find a difference in your health when you went when you changed your diet like oh my goodness it, only after a few months really okay. i have more energy when i'm vegan I have more energy but then that's when the anxiety came on i, I was uh, wow. messing around with my heart and my blood pressure and all that with all that salt Wow. So I had to find a balance because I, I fell in love with, uh, when I was a vegan, I fell in love with C10. And mm -hmm. uh, C10, it's like a vegan steak. Oh, okay. 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 And um, it's so it good. <laughs> it is so good. But it's more like what the seasonings that you put in it. And okay. becoming a vegan, actually, that's when I also fell in love with cooking. So mm -hmm. with sarcoidosis, I would say it's definitely about diet. Um, staying active and um, what you clean with too. Just use as many natural um, chemicals that you can, you know, even sure. if you have to use ammonia, that a certain uh, portion of pneumonia can kill a lot of bacteria. So uh, oh. yeah, but vinegar, lemon, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll be amazed. And then oh, just, yeah, those are, those are powerful cleaning and uh, disinfecting agents for sure. Yes. And then, oh, of course, baking soda. And then for like air freshener, fresh lavender. I lavender mean, is great. You can't, you can't lose with lavender. It's a great smell. Yeah. Well, um, those are definitely some challenges on top of being an independent. And of course, you know, you're working day and night, just trying to keep your uh, music out there. So um, for all the indies out there or, or just any artist that's trying to, you know, put their music out there. You're hearing it from a young lady who uh, probably has the same kinds of challenges or different challenges, but nonetheless, there's always an obstacle to uh, overcome when you're trying to do something you really love, right? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to uh, get ready to listen to some new music from you. And uh, of course, I heard it first. So <laughs> I liked it, it was pretty cool. And it definitely yeah. sounds like, um, Sound like you're a full voice on this one. I and, let it all uh, out. <laughs> yes. So what's what's uh, next for you before we uh, play the video? Next is to um, get a demo together. Mm -hmm. um, shop around, do whatever I can to get some more attention to my lyrics because I aspire to be a songwriter. But I oh, mean, so you want to do some writing for other artists? I do. I want to sit back and be like, oh. You know, give birth to my baby. Go on, go on. You know, uh, I'm one sitting back, all proud and everything. You know, is um, that you find keyboards on your new project? No, no. That actually, that um, that was a production with uh, Lemon Richards, who I dedicated that song to. Um, he passed away last year. Oh wow! Um, yeah, he actually is from New York as well. And uh, when I came to New York, I got a chance to meet him that night at the show. Oh, wow. That was really nice. Yeah, we met on MySpace, I think. Oh, my really? God. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so, nice. yeah. Hey, you know, they're still around. I'm telling you. But, um, I mean, we talked on the phone and things like that. And um, he was just an, um, one out of several producers, beat makers, and musicians who gave me the chance to work with them via email, um, dropbox.com, send files back and forth. I mean, it was just like we were there together, like we oh, always nice. knew each other. So I'm, I'm so grateful. That How did you meet him? Um, it was MySpace. 
Okay, right. Okay, so you, I'm sorry. Yeah, you did say my face. Okay, yeah, right. and I'm, I can't remember if it it was probably me because I'm always up in people's face, pages and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Hey, how you doing? I see you. <laughs> I see you make tracks and you play guitar. You play piano. You know, like all. Wow. <laughs> I'll take a chance. I mean, I'm not a pest, but um, a lot of times I feel like. Well, my dad used to tell me he's like, "Well, the worst you can get is a no." And exactly. I was like, no's, right. No's don't hurt. Yeah. And then even no. if they say no, I can say, are you sure? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Give a second chance to say no. You might, might be able to flip it. Yeah. To no to a yes. So yeah, I appreciate that because you know, it's, it's almost like who you know in the industry and um, people are a lot of held back because of their accomplishments don't want to have too many distractions, which I completely understand. So right. I'm, I'm just grateful for a chance anytime, like right now when you have an open door and a chance to communicate with the great Bob Baldwin. So uh, hey. jelly y'all. No. <laughs> Note the <to> self. <laughs> what inspired you to write the song, by the way? Oh yeah. Uh, mm, long way home, yeah, being away from home. Um mm -hmm. home being Ohio, of course. Yes. And now um we are building a home in the North Georgia mountains, right up the nice. foothills of the Appalachian Trails. Thank God, That's my exciting. peace. That's exciting. Oh, my peace. Yes, Jesus. Um, but uh it made me think of the Wiz and uh -huh. Wizard of Oz and right. um when I was writing it. And I was thinking uh -huh. like Dorothy, you know, and I'm like, wow, I wanted to get away from home because I just felt like I was missing something. You know, I'm right. just like, I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. And anytime I was meeting someone and then it was all related through music, music was mm -hmm. the one that got me out there, got me to leave home. And mm -hmm. uh, it was just like, when bad things happened, you know, could have been a relationship, it could have been a mentor, you know, mm -hmm. um, I started to feel like, oh God, if I have to go back home with my tail between my legs, you know, I'm at least say that I met somebody or, you know, That's I got right. a connection somewhere, you know, I just- Nothing I, beats failure, but a try. Yes. I, I just didn't want to go home with nothing. Cause I'm like, right. if, if I'm going home, somebody going to join me on this journey. I'm a I hear you. from Ohio. Yeah. So that's what inspired it. And, um, okay. you know, and of course the movie and, uh, it, 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 every time I listen to it, which I had to listen to it when I was recording it and made sure that the final recording was great, but, mm -hmm. um, I, it touches me. It, it, it really, it touches me in a place that does not heal because of hmm. some of the things that's happened after I left home. So wow. that song right there is very, very important. So I'll go home because I know I always got a roof to stay with my mama and my stepdaddy, but sure, sure. You know, and I'm a you know, grown now and you know, so it does, it touched my heart. A hmm. long way home is my new baby and um an uplifting moment whenever I feel like I haven't done enough or I don't feel good enough. I'll listen to it and it helps me a lot. You yeah. can call that your theme song for uh, 2021, right? Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'm talking to a young lady named Tanil, independent artist who's uh, putting out her single, Long Way Home, on this uh, taping here. And of course, after uh, we run the uh, video, it's gonna run in a hot second, you'll get a chance to chat with Tanil online and uh, communicate with her. And, Give her kudos, give her encouragement, and uh, I think you'll like the track, if I do say so myself. So, Tanil, it is a pleasure talking to you, and I wish you nothing but the best of success uh, in your travels. I'm sure you got some more long ways, long roads home. You got some more music ahead of you, so we look forward to hearing about the other things you're going to pursue in, in your musical life. Thank you, BB. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate Without it. Without further ado, huh? I appreciate it. Oh, not a, not a problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's check out Tania with Long Way Home. It's such a long walk, a long walk from here. Mm -hmm. 